Good afternoon. Don't you just love these lazy, relaxing summer Sundays? It's time, though, to walk away from the Barbie and forget the Sunday snooze. England are playing Germany in the World Cup, and you know what that means. Good memories and bad. When the groups were drawn for this World Cup and people were saying, who do you think will play in the second round? I just shook my head and I said, you know something? It's bound to be Germany. There's naturally a lot of history between Germany and England, uh, not just on the football pitch, but it is always a, a special game. The atmosphere, uh, the expectation, there's been some tears shed. I remember in 1966, uh, I actually watched a game uh, at home with my mum and dad. Uh, I'd have been 18, 19 at the time. I was a, a, a player at West Ham. It wasn't uh, a big super screen television in them days. It was probably about a 12 inch television. Those that didn't have one went in somebody else's house and watched one. It was a great day. I was proud to be English that day. I remember it going into extra time and Jeff ran away with the ball and run with the ball and run with the ball. Some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Well, you never forget Moro going, going up there to collect the World Cup. He wiped his hands before he shook hands with the Queen and uh, he looked what he was. He was every boy's hero. Well, in 1970, I was a young radio reporter working for BBC Radio 2. Many people felt then that England were a better team in 70 than they'd been in 66 when they'd won the tournament. And you know, I made the fatal mistake when England were leading 2-0 of writing down the semi-final lineup, England versus Italy. And at that moment, Franz Beckenbauer scored. From then on, it all went wrong. And Hula gets the third. Absolutely flabbergasted. Nobody said a word. I remember the semi-final in 1990. The German goal was a complete fluke. We all looked round to see, and it just seemed to take an eternity. And I thought, he's not going to get there. If you're watching England play, and they score a big, important goal in a World Cup, well, we're all like, I'm still the same now, jumping up. But to score it yourself, it's like an explosion of different emotions, of joy, of relief. It's penalties. I was convinced we were going to win the penalty shooting. Can he do it for England? He can't! There were four volunteers and Chris Waddle, and Chris I sort of didn't fancy him. It was just his walk towards it. It was sort of begrudging. He didn't really want to be there. And England are out of the World Cup. The feeling that you get is whew, one of total desolation. It's the one game, it's the one thing from my whole career that I think back and think, if only. I remember in 96. Uh, there was a belief in that team that. The further we went in that tournament, then we were going to win that thing. They equalised. I still have bad memories of Gaza sort of half an inch away, a stud away. That would have put us in the final. I wouldn't wish my worst enemy for to go up and, and take a penalty in that situation. The Germans go through again. We could all say we tried our very, very best. No, when, you, when that happens, no one can ask any more. England again suffer the torment. If England played the potential, I think we've got better players than the Germans. But the Germans and they always pull something out against us. I just think it's England's turn somehow. I think we're due one, aren't we? Here we go again. The round of 16 may not trip off the tongue, but England-Germany certainly does. And despite the fact that plenty of England fans had bought tickets for last night's game in Rustenburg, they've arrived in Bloemfontein in great numbers and uh, seem to be in good spirits. No knockout game in any tournament between England and Germany has ever been settled in normal time. So here, prepared for the long haul, are Alan Hansen, Alan Shearer and Lee Dixon. And for the first time in my life, I can honestly say I wish I was Alan Hansen. <laughs> He's the only one who's relaxed around here. 
I don't know what all the fuss is about England. <laughs> have got the better players. If they play well, they win. I really think that. And but if they play <coughs> badly as they did against the USA, they're home. Mm. Against Algeria, they're home. Slovenia, it's a maybe. I think they've got up the um, the performance levels. Uh, the good news for England that. When they scored against Slovenia, there was a surge in the confidence. and You could see that they were eager to play, eager to get it. I think possession is the key here. Don't give it away cheaply. Keep a hold it. Get after the Germans. Hey, the Germans are masters at getting the job done. We all know that. But they're an average side and eminently beatable. Well, you said they're an average side there. Would we worry less if they weren't called Germany? Is he mad saying he doesn't know what all the fuss is about? <laughs> <laughs> For the first time in the four years I've been retired, I'm missing football. This is the only time that I want to be out on the pitch today, I have to tell you. It's, it's uh, easier playing than watching, I've found. It is easier it's playing than watching, absolutely. I think we're all, uh, we're all a nervous wreck in here when that game gets going. But um, man for man, I really believe if, we, if the players turn out that we see on a Saturday, then we've got every chance of beating them. My fear is for the first two games in the group, they didn't. But they, they would have picked up tremendous confidence from that third game, the way they played, the way they passed it, the way they created chances. Jermaine Defoe's goal. So I think going into this game, you'll see a different team than you have done in the previous three games. And they're going to have to step up again if they're going to win this game. Well, they say it's quite good to start slow and improve. But it'd be <laughs> nice to start well and then improve. <laughs> well, they started very poorly. And just going back to Alan, I'm glad he isn't playing because his legs have gone, by the way. <laughs> I've, seen him, I've seen him, so he would, did no good for us at all. But I agree with Alan. I think this Germany side, is it, the, the name is bigger than the team. I think they're, they are beatable. They're a very young side. Balak's a big miss for him, but having said that, he, he's a big personality and I think the youngsters have stepped up the plate. And uh, some of their youngsters are, are playing really well, but I still think, you look at their back line, I still think the way we're playing now, passing the ball in the last game, we can definitely get out of their back line. Yeah, I mean, you look at Mertesacker, every time I see him play, even if he's playing well, I think there's a mistake in there somewhere. You know, I think if Defoe, Gerard Rooney can get after him, get in about his feet, I think they'll get success. OK, well, the England players arrived in Bloemfontein a short while ago. Here they come. Wayne Rooney looking to find his best form still, of course. Stephen Gerrard wants... and David James behind him, yet to concede a goal at this World Cup, of course. Uh, here is the starting 11 that Fabio Capello has entrusted with the task of beating Germany. In goal, of course, we've just seen him, David James. It is, in fact, the same 11 players that played against Slovenia. Glenn Johnson at right back, Terry and Upson in the centre of defence and Ashley Cole on the left side. At four-man midfield, Milner on the right, Lampard in the centre. Gareth Barry playing the holding role again with Steven Gerrard on the left. And, of course, Wayne Rooney alongside the goal scorer in the last game, uh, Jermaine Defoe. What do you think to that? No surprise? Well, it is a no, surprise think, in a way, because it's the first time he's ever picked the same team I twice. think he's done the right thing, going with the same 11. I thought uh, against Slovenia, Gerard showed a lot of discipline in that left-hand side. I think you've got balance here, you've got Milner on the right. The big thing for me is if Rooney performs as you know he's capable, then England are really in business, Al. The only decision he had, Gary, was for me, was to whether to change his centre-half and Matthew Upson with Ledley King and Jamie Carragher both being available now. But Has he made the right decision, do you feel, at this well, stage? Well, I think ability-wise, then, you would probably say Ledley King is a better player and better defender than Matthew Upson. But to be fair to, to Upson, he came in and he couldn't have done any more, so I, I totally understand why he's kept that same side. There's nothing, nothing better as a back four when the team's named and it's the same back four as you had just, just the game before, because all of a sudden you go, oh, yeah, we know what we've done, yeah. we're, we're all in position and we'll just do the same thing. For the goalkeeper as well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's important to keep that solidity and a bit of belief and yeah. just the regularity of well, playing together, I guess, kept a, winning, kept a winning side. As I said, the, the belief and the confidence that that team and those as individuals would have, would have had from that game we should stand them in good stead and we should see a, a much improved performance again. Well, that's right, because against Slovenia they were good, they weren't great. And to win the World Cup, they're going to have to become great at some stage. And they were playing Slovenia. Yeah, yeah correct. Germany. <laughs> it's just a, a different... Well, you mentioned Germany. Let's uh, have a look at um, their starting lineup. Uh, Miroslav Klose uh, returns from suspension and takes the place of Kakao, who picked up a stomach muscle injury in training. Uh, Boateng has recovered from a calf injury that forced him off against Ghana and keeps his place. And uh, coach Joachim Lowe uh, was a relief man when the key midfielder, Bastian Schweinsteiger, uh, was past fit. Teams are on the pitch. There's Love. Um, he's, he's got a different sort of system. He sort of plays the two holding players and three bit further forward behind the striker of closer. Yeah, I mean, you know, in the first, you look at them in the first game against Australia and they, they moved it really well and they played really well. 
but albeit against an Australian side that were never at the races. The next two games, they sort of struggled. I think they've gone backwards, you know. Whereas England have struggled the first couple of games and then played better the third game, it's the opposite way about for the Germans, yeah. which is good news. I think I think the game will be won and lost today, mate, in the back four. Friedrich, Mertesacker and Botang. I think the way Milner played the other day on the right-hand side, I think he, he could have a, a lot of joy against Botang, the left-back. And the two centre-halves for me lack pace. And if Rooney keeps on improving, there was a little bit of an improvement in the last game. And Defoe gets in the box, as he did. For me, there's goals there. I think um, Schweinsteiger, yeah. he had a slight hamstring four days ago. That shows how important he is because you know what it's like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If he's playing today, he must be up right on the edge of fitness. Mm. And so, you know, difficult position centre midfield to play against the, the pace and, and the but power again, you, we've got there. You look at the lineup, you can't say that lineup on paper is anything to write home about. You know, you look at the England lineup, you, you categorically say that that's a better team. I just want to ask you, Alan, about Wayne Rooney. He's, he's clearly not been in his best form yet. A bit better in the last game against yep. Slovenia. He looks a little bit jaded. Is, can he, do you think, find that energy levels that, that we've seen so often with Manchester United? It can come into his game. I think he can, and I think he has to. If we're going to go on and progress and win this thing, even before the tournament started, we all said he has to be at full pelt. He has to be winning his games. At the moment, he hasn't done that. There's still a big improvement for him, but there was a, there was a little improvement in the last game. So he'll pick up on that as well. And I think against these two centre-halves, as I said, they lack pace. And with I... Rooney and Defoe, they can... They can Build on that, I'm sure of it. If the causes of his bad play in the World Cup has been a long, hard season, that Manchester United is in big trouble. Mm. Big trouble. Mm. OK. Uh, well, a constant companion to the England team these days is the FA's Director of Football Development, Sir Trevor Brooking. Here he is with Gabby. This England squad have got so much more big tournament experience than this very young, inexperienced, relatively German squad. How much is that going to count for today? Well, you can find out. I mean, you'd like to think it'll help. Sometimes, though, you're only young, you don't have nerves. I knew two or three of these from the under-21s last summer, the Germans, and people like Ozil, uh, Muller uh, and Kadir are really good players. That trio, I think, have freshened them up as a team to the one that we played just over a year ago. So uh, we're under no illusions, you know, we've got to be really focused. It's important for us, I think, to try and tuck away one or two of the chances. The first and third games, we created a lot, but we only scored two in the three matches we played in. So we know in a match like this, if your ch a decent chance comes away, you've got to try and put them uh, and hopefully then that relax everyone. Older members of the audience and older members of the squad will think back to 1990, but so many members of this squad have beaten Germany on more than one occasion. Do you think the fear's gone, this, this old fear in this squad? I don't think, yeah, I don't think, you know, when you look at the experience in our team as squad, I don't think they'll be fearful. You, you just realise it's a, it's a massive game and, and you just want to try and, you know, impact it yourself. More than anything, as I say, as an individual, you want to come away from it thinking, I gave everything there. And, and if, as I say, we can get enough of our top performers doing that, then, you know, we are quietly confident we can come through this one. But, um, it, yeah, they'll be thinking the same. But, you know, more than anything, um, you know, fingers crossed that we do ourselves justice. Are you excited? Very, very excited. I only wish my old bones would enable me to get on the pitch. It's just a game as a, as a player. You want to be out there and good luck to those that are going to represent us. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I think we all feel a bit that way. Um, I think it's time we heard from the last Italian competing in the World Cup. Fabio, after the Slovenia match, straight away you said you got your team back. What did you mean by that? Yes, because I saw during the game the spirit of the team. We play very well. We miss uh, not a lot of passes and uh, this was very important because when you have the ball, we are really good. The passes, the dribbling, the movement with the ball, without the ball. I was really happy after the, the game. We created also a lot of chances to score goals, but we miss. But this is not so important. I, I won't, for me, it's important to, to see the, the team, the shape on, on the pitch, and also the spirit that we played. Each one helped the other one uh, was really important. Milner, Defoe tries to get there! Jermaine Defoe scores! I think Germany will be a really important game. It's the level of the players of Germany is really high. It will be not so easy to create a lot of chances to score goals. Probably we will create two, three, and we score more goals. 
Because you, after the Australia game, you were quite um, dismissive of what Franz Beckenbauer had said and said Germany weren't that good. After you saw them against Ghana, did you change your opinion about Germany? Germany is uh, a really good team. You play very well against the first game that they played. Against Ghana, they won. And, uh, but Ghana had some chances to score goal. But Germany is always one really good team because a good organization, good, good spirit on the pitch always. Just going to ask you about penalties because I know you've been practicing penalties every day. Every day. Yes. Every day, since Austria. Yes. And you're happy with that? They're going in? But it, it, the training is easy to score goal. When you have to score goal the, in, in front of the thousand people and you know that behind you they are one country, it's different. Well, we know him as a disciplinarian, we know him as a control freak, we used to know him as Mr. Cool. Uh, not anymore. Take a look at this. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to be Stuart Pearce. Watch the pounding he takes here. Little word. Pearce gesticulates, little elbow, another one. He's getting angry now, it gets worse. There you go, <laughs> a bit of a shove there. Another nudge. Head in his hands. It's not my fault, boss. <laughs> He's gone now, he's had enough. Sit down. Get back here, he says. No, go away again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great stuff. We've never seen him so animated, have we? <laughs> I think it's really, really funny, but I think it's great to see a bit of passion in there. Yeah. Um, after the Slovenia game, when he went on the pitch, you know, the interview with Gabby he did, I think it's all fantastic. It shows a human side, and it's... Absolutely great for the players. I've never um, seen anyone bully Stuart Pearce. <laughs> yeah. A few elbows there. He could yeah. have his two yellow cards for that, couldn't he? <laughs> nice to see a bit of humour, though, isn't it? Because yeah. we've not <laughs> seen that side of him before. And he, there was obviously a joke going on as well, and Gary Lewin couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> Do you think it may help that Capello's probably not as obsessed with the Germans as we are? <laughs> I'm sure he knows the history. I, I'm absolutely sure of that. But um, I think it was a bit of an understatement when he also said it's, it, it could be an important game. God, it's, uh, it's a very, very important game. It'll be a great atmosphere, I'm sure it will. Great games, great games to play in as well, absolutely. I'm pretty sure he'll realise how big a game it is when he sees the players' faces before <laughs> the games, because they know how big it is, for sure. Mm. And they, the warm-up is always... I don't know, you get to sort of feel how you are physically with the warm-up, don't you? And well, this is the worst time for a player, isn't it? Just before the game, in the dressing room, your boots and your kit, you just want to get out there and you're playing. The manager has what he has to say and set pieces and everything else, and you just, you're just in the zone and want to get out and play. I wouldn't know, I never warmed up myself. <laughs> I just went on and played. Finish your toes and off you go. <laughs> uh, well, Germany haven't failed to reach the last eight of the World Cup since 1938. Don't you just hate stats? Uh, one of our favourite Germans can't understand what all the fuss is about. It's actually quite boring watching Germany. It's not always pretty, but we seem to win a lot. I can't believe you guys got so excited about a group match against Slovenia. I am really, really happy because I, I refound the team that I know. I don't get this English fever. Back home, we don't even start watching until the knockout stages. After all, we reached seven finals and won three times. Fuller! And again! And don't count on us missing a penalty. After all, it only happens every 28 years. I guess it's going to be the same old story. 1-0 Germany! Boris Becker, our former favourite German. <laughs> uh, slightly on the smug side there, Lee. <laughs> Has he got good He's calls? no friend of mine, I tell you that. Not today, anyway. Yeah. We've, we've been impressed with Ozil in this tournament. Yeah. The centre of... Uh, he could be the, a real threat, couldn't he? Very much so. I think he's been their class player in all three games that, that they've played in so far. Plays in the, the hole, as we say. But he runs from, from deep, he runs through gaps. Should score here. 
But he's not only that, he's an all-round player. I think he's very difficult to pick up. Look how deep he is here and look at the run, the run he makes. Right through the middle of the team. And again, perhaps finishing he's not his strong point. Perhaps thinks of going down but doesn't. And he pops up on the right this time. He's a good thinker. He can dribble. A great passer of the ball. When he plays a simple pass, he looks brilliant as well. Sets up Podolski goal against Australia. And this one would just show him again in midfield. He tucks inside, and what a pass this is. He can pick things out. He's got a brain on him. It'd just be interesting to see how England pick him up, whether a midfield player picks him up or one of the centre-backs picks him up, because he just plays in that little, that little space. You see here, no-one closing down, and when you can let him shoot right around the box. So they've got decisions to make, whether to drop off one of the midfield players or... Drop one for Gareth Barry, perhaps, as the Maybe, yeah, player. but sometimes he'll be occupied, and so it might need one of the centre-halves to go on, because they'll only have closer up front, yeah. so one of those might have to go in. Yeah, Alan, I don't know how many years or how many hours you've spent talking about Steven Gerrard. Lots. But, um, <laughs> again, he's, he's going to be pivotal with England, and he's got to retain that discipline we saw, perhaps, on the last well, game. Well, I think he's been England's uh, best player in the, in the competition, and, um, like you say, the discipline he showed against... Slovenia was remarkable because I've never seen it before. This is against Algeria, wide on the left. How many times he touched the ball actually in that position. And then we go to the one against Slovenia. You can see... Contrast. The, well, total contrast. And, and the big thing for me, again, was the attacking play, where he gets close to Rooney. When he plays with Rooney and gets close to him, we're really excited. Good head there. Great pass, but brilliant movement. Good hit, good save. The second half... Very, very similar. He wins it here, Stephen, plays it into Wayne, and then it's bump, bump, get it back. Wayne should hit it there. Fantastic. But even defensively, we see uh, against Algeria, he was more defensive against Algeria than he was against Slovenia. Mm. And I think that's good. I think Cap what Capello said, right, starting the left. And we'll see why here, because you've got Gerard and Cole there. Gerard in the build-up. Ashley Cole comes back and sits. You've got the balance of the team there. You've got two people sitting, uh, uh, Cole and, and Barry. And as I say, the balance is great. I think it's a tribute to the manager, the way Stephen played in that position, because he's obviously gone to Stephen and said, hey, you've got to start in that position. I'm not, I don't care if you come inside and play, but your starting position must be wide in the left. And Stephen's taken that on board and played magnificently. And that's the sort of management you need. You, players need direction, don't they, Alan? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You need direction. You need someone to be uh, to have authority. He's certainly got that. I think he's he's brought a calmness. I'm sure there would have been there would have been uh, plenty of jitters around after the first two games. And it's a manager's job to uh, to try and calm that down. And we were all crying for for Gerard to play in behind Rooney. And I still think that will be his best position. But. He's, he, he was certainly more disciplined the other night. Not only was he more disciplined on the left, he actually got up in support of the front men would, would as he all, could. Would we all still like to see England play ideally with Rooney up top and Gerrard behind? We've we, been pretty unanimous beforehand. Yeah, Have we yeah. changed our minds now well, we've won a game? Or? I, I think he's our best player with yeah. Rooney, and so I think you should play him in his best position and on the left as well as he's playing. He's not his best position, but we'll do for now. Beat the Germans and then we'll yeah, play the against never ever, The left will never ever be his best position. Mm. He's, he's, well, he's never played him behind Rooney, so I, I no. doubt well, he's well, well, it doesn't look like he's going to, but I mean, as I say, the big thing there was, for me, that he had the discipline to stay in that position, yeah. because whenever he plays there, he always comes looking, he'll go left, he'll come inside and then go searching for the ball, whereas I think Capello said to him, look, you're starting position. Is it a selfishness or an indiscipline? Ill discipline. He just wants to play. I think, I think he just wants well. to play. I think he wants to, yeah, to be natural, where the ball yeah. is, to go and play. But again, the big thing in the clips there is, that we're all excited about when he gets close to Rooney because mm. we think there's a partnership there that mm. will gel and, and cause problems. It's when things happen. Uh, Germany's assistant coach, Hans-Dieter Flick, yes, Herr Flick, says at the end of the day, this will be a classic. Nice to know Germans do clichés too. But who is winning the war of words? Got a shooting chance. Let's go.
let's hope Bill knows his business. Another line to boost your confidence. England have played Germany 27 times. If you discount penalty shootouts, and we will, England have won 12 and Germany 10. Don't you love stats? Here's a man who'd like to forget penalty shootouts. Chris Waddle is pitch side with Gabby. So, Chris, we've heard the team. The lineup remains unchanged, uh, which is not Fabio Capello's normal way. First time ever. He's normally known as a squad father to, to all of us, but um, it's good, it's positive. I thought um, for an hour in the last game against Slovenia, I thought they played very well. They looked more like an England side we expect. They were creating chances, um, good tempo, and that's what they'll need today against this team. And they've got more experience, more big tournament experience. It's a very young German team, isn't it? Yes, I, I don't think they know the past games. I think there's a lot of them that young. The fear's but, gone. Yes, the feel have gone. But they'll come out, they're very confident, say, Germany. They're very similar. On, on when, when you look at the teams and you match everybody up, there's some interesting battles today. And you just need the players to perform their abilities and a little bit of luck and hopefully the result goes right. They are such big occasions, such special occasions. What's it like to play in one of these matches? Well, it, it, it's it's obviously the game you want. You'd, you'd love it further on in the competition, but it, you've got to do it now. Um, the rivalry is massive. Um, I think we take a little bit more serious than the Germans, I've got to say. But they love beating the English, there's no doubt about that. But. Um, it's always going to be a tight affair. We want to do it in 90 minutes. I, I vowed I wasn't going to mention penalties, but 90 minutes would be nice. Hopefully. I, I mean, I'm commentating as well, and hopefully I'm going to talk through them penalties. But, yeah, I think everybody wants to. Let's the game decided normal play. Penalties are a lot. You know how good the Germans are at penalties, but they've got a young squad, so they might be a little bit nervous. Finally, what's your gut saying? I just hope, fingers crossed, I hope we get the right result. But it's so evenly matched, it could go to penalties. <laughs> Having said all that. <laughs> He was a terrific player. Also playing in 1990 for Germany was Jürgen Klinsmann. Our favourite German's been talking to Colin Murray. It's going to be an amazing game because it's, it's just a classic. It's a, it's a big, big uh, situation for both nations, even if you know, the circumstances are a bit different. You, know, you have a very young German team that actually needs still a little bit of time to develop. <laughs> And you have an English side that hasn't really started the tournament yet. They have the quality to, to outplay any team in the world if they step up to a higher pace. And they haven't picked up that pace yet in this tournament. They know that they have to improve. They know that they have every individual player of England so far hasn't shown their real, real capabilities yet. And, and that's maybe what Germany is a little bit scared about, you know, You're scared of. Because once they've really improved, then it's tough to beat them. If I would be a kind of in the position of a Steven Gerrard or Frank Lampard or John Terry, I want to make sure that this is my World Cup. You know, I would do anything possible to grab that moment and 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 step up. You know, you have to to realize this is your moment, and uh, um, that's what we're waiting for. You know, looking at it from a neutral side, <laughs> I'm not waiting for it necessarily for Sunday, but but uh, I think every English fan wants to see them kind of play at their real potential. And uh, there are not many World Cups left for them. Miroslav Klose has got the goal he has been desperately searching for. I'm happy that Miroslav Klose is back because he's really the only top-class striker, world-class striker we have in our in our squad. The, the other strikers that we have are all kind of just on their way to get there, hopefully within the next few years, but they're not there yet. And, and, and Miroslav Klose, he has the experience of a couple of World, uh, World Cups, he has already 11 goals in World Cups and he can step it up because he has the ability. So I hope that he you know, will show that in that match and then everybody's waiting for Wayne Rooney. There's no question about it. I mean, he has so much class, he is such an exceptional player that we all, I mean, now from a neutral position, we all wish that he kind of really enters the tournament on a big stage. Jürgen, last time we talked, you looked down this very camera and you assured the English people if they could get into the last 16, they could win the World Cup. Now they're facing Germany, what have you got to say? Well, if I have to say something for the English fans looking forward to the game against Germany, is, you know, I want to see an English team playing at their best, tremendous football, fast-paced football, great passing, everything in there, but losing at the end of the day. Cheers. Yeah, thanks, Jürgen. Not quite a smug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I believe him, you know. Yeah. I think he's like England are going to win. Like, English now, is he too? He doesn't like the Germans. His team didn't do it in <laughs> yeah. 2006, so he doesn't want anybody else to do it. <laughs>
I believe that he's talking <laughs> the, of the English more up than he is the uh, than the Germans. Why would he? Um, if he if he's not the manager, you just get the feeling he doesn't want them <laughs> to win it, <laughs> does he? Well, no. It seemed like he was uh, players warming up in English. outside. Oh, Rooney looks sharp to me. <laughs> <laughs> All the positives. Look at the passing there. Oh, They've brilliant. been talking about been training though this week, haven't they? Apparently had a shooting session the other day and. Uh, he battered David James into submission, apparently, but he's... Uh... So much is in the head, isn't it? Oh. I just think, you know, you know as well as I do, Gary, if you get a goal, you'll see a different player. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely positive of that, and hopefully today will be his day. I used to hate these little little five-a-side things and keep balls before a game. Not really your game, really, was no, it? Just, <laughs> well, the thing is, you can't kick anybody in this. <laughs> you can't pull out. <laughs> it didn't used to take you long in the game itself, though, did it? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> uh, as we all know, uh, England lost on penalties in 1990 and, of course, at Euro 96. I suggest you prepare yourselves. The penalty through English eyes. The Germans started it, of course. Not that it mattered. Since that very first shootout miss, the Germans haven't looked back. As for the English, the goal has looked very small indeed. The worst thing you can do is, you know, probably we're probably at fault for this, but we're talking about it already for the last month and we're nervous for obvious reasons. I've watched us take the penalties um, twice and, um, and lose twice and it was a horrible feeling. It's time to break the chain. You've been practicing penalties every day. Every day, yes. Every day, since Austria. Yes. And you're happy with that? They're going in? Yes. So, who's on the list? I don't think there'll be no surprises. The Barrys, your Lampards, your Gerrards, Rooney's. Yeah, of course. It's, you know, forward. Um, you should always want to take penalty, I think. Yeah, definitely. I'll always put myself forward. Um, you've got to be confident in them situations. Steve Gerrard, Lampard and, and myself practice a lot. Practice all kinds of penalties. Um, and then with that in the bank, I feel like I've got an air of confidence about me anyway. And when I take it, I try and just block out all thoughts. The takers, you've got to throw them a bone now and then. I'm practicing against the same people all the time. And if you get into a habit of knowing where certain players are going to go, then it could be kind of detrimental towards a player. So I have to let a few in. <laughs> it doesn't pay to be too good. No, I am very confident when I take them, even having missed a couple. Um, I think that's not always a bad thing. It kind of redresses your mind to realise the right things. Ah, yes, the mind. Choose your spot, not change your mind, and you know, be positive with it. Um, I think a lot of penalties that are missed, people generally say they've changed their mind at the last minute. What's your mental preparation? I don't know if I should be giving away trade secrets here. The, uh... That's what they all say. Well, video research is probably the best indicator. So you research you have the, the, take, you have the takers yeah. from the other team? Don't overdwell on it, don't overthink about it when it comes to put the ball down and sort of go into autopilot as such. That's what I would try and do. Um, it's not always so easy when there's 50,000 around you and the world watching. What's your own philosophy with the penalty? Do you know, and kick it as hard as you can. And <laughs> keep it down. Is that pretty much the philosophy across the board, uh, do you think? Well, it is. <laughs> Nothing would be expected of us if we get into penalty shootouts against the Germans. Everyone will expect just to expect the Germans to win. So the pressure will be more on them, you know? What have you got to lose? Oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> I mean, the Germans have only had one draw in the last 15 <laughs> matches. It won't come to penalties. <laughs> but if it does, Alan, we've sort of been there and it's a tense-old affair, isn't it? Just a bit. I think that's, that's, that is an understatement. You know, once the extra time starts, the only thing in your head is, I hope this doesn't go to penalties. Please let's get a winner in normal I've, time. I've been in, in teams where you've, I've known some real hard men and real tough men of the game and good players, and when the manager says, who's <laughs> taking the penalties? Gone missing. I've seen some heads go down like that, by the way, from some experienced players, I know, yeah. <laughs> what, what worried me in the interview was that they kept naming the, the penalty takers, and only every time they named four. So I don't know, <laughs> the fifth one's hiding somewhere. But of course it's very different. You might have five before the game, but those five might not be on after extra time, so it's, yeah, it's difficult. Exactly. Um, Alan, you're 
seem to be shying away from this conversation. Well, I've got Never... nothing but admiration for anybody that takes a penalty kick in these circumstances. I mean, uh, the only one I've ever been in was 84 in Rome, Champions League final, and I was not worried about the score at all. I was only worried <laughs> about me taking a penalty kick. I mean, and and that, that's what can happen. I mean, you, I think it's a mental thing when you go up and take a penalty kick. You've yeah. got to be very, very, very strong mentally. You've got to be very mental. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Um, Frank Lampard, he's, if he's still on the pitch, very likely to take one England's uh, penalty taker, of course. Um, you, you well, I heard, I heard them say that um, they've practised, 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 but I, I'm telling you, it doesn't make that much difference. Oh, come on. Oh, Any I'm, difference. It's, yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's missed a couple as well. It's he's missed a couple of I think Chelsea. You just can't replicate the situation, Gary. You know, you've stood there and there's millions watching on the, at home, there's the, the thousands, and probably more importantly, you've got your teammates standing behind you. When it means something, you yeah, can take 100 in training, you know as well as I do. It's take the ultimate pressure, isn't it, really? Oh. You, you, you can't if get you've hit a hundred and thousands of penalties, you've got to have more chance in scoring if you, than if you've hit none. You showed that against Brazil. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> David Batty had never took one, had he? Let's, wait, let's wait and see, then. <laughs> let's hope it doesn't even come to that. But uh, in case it does, the former German keeper, Oliver Kahn, has been involved in a few shootouts in his time. Might as well pick his brains. In the eyes, you see this kind of fear. great penalty kicker has a, a plan. He goes to the point and he, before he shoots on the goal, he knows what he's doing. Preparation for a goalkeeper before a penalty shootout is very important. I rely on my feelings, you know. I have some information about the players and I look to the player and ask myself, is he a, a technical player? Yes. Or is he a player who only goes to the ball and powers the ball into the net? It's an interesting game between the goalkeeper and the player. Saving penalties, I think he needs a lot of luck. <laughs> that's, that's very important. If the English team uh, becomes again a penalty shootout against Germany, they should not think about the past. They should uh, concentrate themselves on, on the present. For me, the perfect penalty is the one I say. Just as well he's not playing, then. Uh, the Tottenham manager has supplied almost a quarter of the England squad. Harry Redknapp is pitch side with Gabby. Thanks very much, Gary. And uh, Harry and I are just trying to work out whether or not we've overpowered the Germans with fans. We think we might. Fantastic atmosphere, Gabby, and it looks very much flags everywhere. Definitely winning that battle, no problem. OK, let's get on to the pitch, then. The two starting 11s. Have we got reason, if we compare those two, to feel confident? I think we feel very confident. You know, we, I, I think today's the day when we'll see England really come and play. And uh, we've got big players and, and outstanding players. I've said it all through the, before the competition started, and I think we'll see that today. They're a young squad, Germany. They yeah. had great success last year, the under-21s. Where are they most dangerous? Well, the, the front players are dangerous. Podolski, you know, scores goals, and uh, and, and the boy who's or like the mid who plays in the hole in behind, he's going to be a problem area for us. Making sure we get around him and don't let him dictate the play or supply killer passes to the front players. But uh, we've got players as well. I feel that can really hurt them today. As a manager, when you're heading into a match like this with such huge rivalry, does it make a difference to the way you prepare your players mentally? I think so. I think today they'll be up for this. They'll see the atmosphere. They know what it means for us to beat Germany. They know what it means for everybody here, back home. And I think we'll see them raise their game tomorrow at an extra 10, 15% that will make the difference. Gary said quarter of the squad from Spurs. Jermaine Defoe, of course, uh, yeah. starting today. He seemed humbled almost by his goal against Slovenia. Uh, he was delighted to score it, no doubt. But what will that have done to his confidence in the last few days? Done his confidence a world of good. The little man's always scored goals. You know, I signed him as a schoolboy. He was scoring goals at every age group all the way through his career. And I think he's going to, you know, I can see him scoring again today. A big day for your family as well with uh, your nephew Frank, Frank out there. Yeah. Have we seen the best of Frank yet? Not in this tournament, no. You know, he's, he's a fantastic player. You look at his record at Chelsea, the goals he scores, week every season, 20 goals. 
I think today might be the day we'll see Frank make one of them runs or unleash a 25 yarder that will make the What's difference. What's been holding him back, do you think? How, how are we going to get the best from him? I don't know. There's no reason. He's been used to playing in a system with five in midfield. It's, that's how he likes to play. That's how he plays at Chelsea. That's where he's had some fantastic games. But he can also play in this system. He'll run forward today. I think he'll run off a of Rooney. He'll run beyond Defoe at times. He'll arrive in the box. And if he right, times his runs right, he could score today. They're all heading back into the dressing room now, the players, for their final talk from their manager. What's going on in there? Well, they 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 sense the atmosphere now and they they go back in and they can feel what it means to everybody in this stadium. And the nerves will be going a little bit. But once they get on that pitch and the referee blows that whistle, they'll be back into doing what they've done all their lives. Thank you, Harry. Gut feeling, quickly. England, 2-1. Thank you. Back to you, Gary. Take that. Uh, we're getting quite close to kickoff. How are you feeling at home? I gather England fever is raging. Stay off the street. Please remain calm. Scientists have identified a new strain of England fever. It raises fears of a fresh outbreak in days to come. Germany face England yet again in a World Cup final. The government had been due to lift the nationwide state of emergency after trials of a vaccine. The vaccine proved successful earlier this week. Jermaine Defoe scores! The effects, however, proved temporary. Yeah, better, but not as good as it should be. It becomes scary. A new strain seems impossible, impossible to contain. To contain. Impossible to contain. It's hot in here, isn't it? Temperatures are soaring across the country. Unfortunately, this heat is only going to add to the danger. But there is hope. People have been seen congregating in bars and squares across the nation. A real sense of unity and strength is visible on the streets. Good luck for the whole of England. Get down there and support us. We need it. There is a genuine belief that England can survive this. England can survive this. Team England together and marching on. Dizzy. <laughs> I know it's a lovely day at home, so if you've uh, just ventured in, here's a reminder of Fabio's 11. It's the same team that played against Slovenia. David James in goal. Glenn Johnson at right back. The two central defenders, John Terry, and he's stuck with Matthew Upson. At left back, Ashley Cole. A four-man midfield of James Milner, Frank Lampard, Gareth Barry is the holding player, and Steven Gerrard on the left. And two men up front, Wayne Rooney and Jermaine Defoe. There you have it. It's the same team that he's um, gone for, Alan. And uh, you think that's a wise mood? I together? think it is. I mean, at times against Slovenia, they were really good after, we said, after they got the goal, the confidence level surged. I think the consensus of everybody is that they've got to up the tempo, they've got to play better, and, and most importantly, they've got to pass it better. And if they do that, you know, I think that they can win the game. This was against the USA. Ledley King, too long, too straight, easy to defend against, support and trouble back in possession. Against Algeria, it doesn't matter if it's high or low, long or short, they were just appalling. Wayne's touch here is just not familiar to the player we see at Manchester United. And then, hopeful ball up there, no good. But then they get the goal against Slovenia. And we see a different England. It's pass it. It's just the way we know that they can do it. You've got a little bit of balance there. Good balling from Gerard. Gerard changes with Ashley Cole. You've got balance between uh, Barry and Cole. Out to Milner. What you've now got when Johnson gets in the in the box, you've got bodies in there. It comes to Gerard at the back stick. Still got the balance between attack and defence. And that's the way they've got to do it. But. Beware. A lapse in concentration late on and against better opposition, yeah. it might be a different outcome. Mm. Alan, you've, in the last game, seemed to get more service from wide areas. Yeah. And, and you want to stress the importance of a good crossing. Well, I thought in the, uh, in the first two games, our crossing with, uh, with Aaron Lennon and um, Sean Wright Phillips was, was really poor. Um, he 
Aaron Lennon gives us with, got great pace, but for me, his, his final ball let him down time and time again. You do not want to hit that area there. That is the first man. You've got to miss that first man out. And he gets into the position, but he hits the first man. As You, you can't do that. He kills the centre forward. Gets in a very good position again. What does he do again? Hits the first man. And for a centre forward, it, it's demoralising. Sean Wright Phillips comes on. He came on on the left-hand side, so more often than not, he's going to go inside, as he, as he did here. We get away with it. It eventually finds its... Uh, it's way out to, uh, to Lennon on the right-hand side. He should either knock that ball past them two defenders and run, because they're not going to catch him, or he's got to whip it in for the, uh, for the centre forwards and the forwards. But he doesn't, he comes out and it goes away to nothing. Right Phillips, left-hand side again, comes inside, no final ball at all. But Milner, the other night, I thought he was fantastic. He gave us width and he had a great understanding with Johnson. Got the area shaded where he got into. That's his first ball. Very, very good ball. And the forwards now know that his first thought is, I'm going to get that ball into the box and you guys better get on the end of it. Gives its width again. One touch, two touch. What does he do? Very good ball in. Ball out to Frank Lampard and we should score. Here comes the goal. He finds himself in the middle, which he can do. And instead of kicking it long, we pass it. Again, good play with him and uh, Glenn Johnson down the right-hand side. His first thought is, I'm going to give it to Johnson. If you're not going to get wide, then I'm going to provide the width. Makes a, a, a decent run outside, and the ball eventually comes to him. And again, Jermaine Defoe knows, because of the first three or four, what exactly what he's going to do is. He's going to move the ball out of his feet and just watch Jermaine Defoe's movement. It's absolutely sensational because he knows that ball is coming in and he can gamble and he can get across that first man as he does and it's another great ball in. This time he gets on the end of it and that's what wins us the game. And for me, the battle against Botang, the left back and the right side midfielder in Milner, I think we can, we can cause them all sorts of problems there today, I really do. Confidence is, is always vital and at this stage of the proceedings we... Yeah. You need a little bit of boost, and you've spotted a few weaknesses or well, possible yeah. weaknesses in the German defence. They've definitely got a, a problem at left back. Bad Studer played the first game, and he might well have to come on today because Boateng has got a calf strain. But here, we see him just go nice and tight, but not tight because there's a runner going. So he's got to drop off. The space behind him, in the end, he ends up fouling Krasic. You give him a torrid time the whole day today. Sometimes you can get too tight too early. Open yourself up for that pass and that run. That's exactly what he does. He's only 21 years of age. He's on the bench today. He could, as I said, he could welcome him for Botang. His body position, the rest of the defence at the back, leaves a bit to de be desired. And at the back here again, just body position all wrong. He's showing him down the line, but he's showing a huge gap inside. He just runs into the gap, doesn't put any challenge up. The rest of the defence has to try and cover. In the end, they get another chance on goal. Two centre backs being exposed down that side. And this guy played in the last game, Boateng, not much better. This is the exact opposite of what you do as a full-back closing the winger down. Gets close, not really too tight, and then, whoops, goes for the first cross. Just comes in too simple. And then on the far post where Milner can come in on him today, look at him, he has no idea what's behind him, he hasn't looked once, and as the cross comes in, standing still, doesn't know the player's behind him. In the end, he gets really lucky because he does a challenge like Alan Hansen said was not the best challenge in his career. <laughs> so I think a left back, especially with Milner playing like he has, they've got a real chance to get at that, this back four. I don't expect at this stage any of us will probably go against England, but uh, what have they got to do to succeed out there? I think they've got to play exactly like they did in the, in the last game and they've just got to play a high tempo and play like they do for the clubs. If that happens, we win the game. I think they've got to improve from the last game, I really do. I know they're, they're, they're done well and they won the game. If they're going to win this game, they're going to have to get better and better as this competition goes on. They're capable of it, there's no doubt about that. It's not Slovenia, it's Germany. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, if you look at 2002, I thought the worst German side in history did really well. 2006 average, they continue and continue to defy the odds. This team is average as well. It might as well end here. We shall see. Uh, when it comes to getting you in the mood, nobody does cheerleading quite like Brian Blessed and a few mates. This has to be England's day. Come on, England! We need to sort it out! Put the shots down! Put your finger out! Once more to the breach, dear friends, once more. Once more! 
stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood. Now set your teeth and stretch your nostrils wide. Now set the teeth and stretch the nostril wide. Hold hard the breath and bend up every spirit. Hold hard the breath and bend up every spirit to his full height. Disguise fair nature with hard-favoured rage. On! You noblest English. On, you noblest English! I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips. Straining upon the start. Straining upon the start! The game's afoot. The game's afoot! Follow your spirit, and upon this charge... Follow your spirit, and upon this charge cry... On for Samuel! England! And St George! <laughs> it worked last time. I've got goosebumps. Jeff Hurst, Peter Bonetti, Chris Waddle, Gaza. Today, another England player will play his way into World Cup history. For better or worse, it's time. Playing for a place in the quarterfinals of the World Cup, it's England versus Germany. Your commentators in Bloemfontein, Mark Lawrenson and Guy Mowbray. <laughs>